here we are at the AHRC Connected Communities Programme Showcase in London, right? And it's, it's really exciting. It's about bringing together people from arts and humanities with sociologists, poll scientists, things like that, working with community partner organisations and community partners. It's about trying to find new ways of doing research. There's a huge range of different projects, a whole raft of community groups and historians who are passionate about a particular area, collaborating with historians, archaeologists, architects, social scientists, artists and others in universities. And what they're doing, I think, is really uncovering a, a new set of stories about our community heritage. The University of Nottingham's Jubilee campus is on the site of what used to be the Rally Factory in Nottingham, which is a historic and iconic bicycle factory that was there for around 100 years, from 1897 through to when it was demolished in 2003. Uh, and the university were interested in re-examining the history of the site and so employed the community theatre company that I work for, Hamby and Barrett, to investigate the memories and stories of people that used to work at the factory. I remember one time we sellotaped one of the guys to a chair and hung him on the conveyor. <laughs> We invited people on the campus to talk about their memories, we ran film weekends where we showed old digitised footage in the factory and then we created a show that we toured round to village halls in and around Nottingham where uh, we invited extra rally workers to come along and they did in, in, in their droves. But when, as a result of it, lots of people came up to us at the end and said they wanted to tell us their stories, to share uh, photographs and images and so as a result of that we're now looking at ways to gather and house that material. The awards we're going to be announcing today, and I'm going to um, name a few in a moment, uh, bring the total number of projects funded under Connected Communities since 2010 to over 250. That's a huge range and diversity. It's a tall order to convey that within the context of even an event that's one day long like this. We have somewhere in the region of 400 partners that are part of current or recent projects that have been funded by the programme. It's not a metaphor of injecting knowledge into a community, you know. It's much more a model of talking, shaping, reshaping, thinking things through together in a collaborative and cooperative way. We're flipping what an academic researcher does. It's like Monopoly. We're using it to sort of get people to discuss about Glossop. When people land on various parts of the board, they get questioned. That has a sort of extract from an interviews that we've been doing and then a question on the other side. When visitors come into Glossop, you got a map and it says like all oh, the town halls here, the statues there, that doesn't really mean so much to people who live there. So we wanted to get more of their response to where they lived and we got them to draw pictures. And basically the monopoly idea was just a fun way of getting them involved. It's called Know Your Bristol and it was aimed at going to seven different places across Bristol to talk to the communities there and gather their personal archives, their personal memories and add that those archives to our website called Know Your Place which has been live in Bristol for the last two years. So we got them to come along, bring their pictures, bring their stories, bring objects that meant something to them and it helps us map out the city and how it's evolved over the years and what people think about their locality. This is a photo taken in 1952 of the St Barnabas Girls Hockey Team, which is a local hockey, community hockey team in South Bristol. We actually had three members of the team come along because they'd seen the poster that we created that had that picture on it. One of the real values of the programme, I think, is that we are making a new community of scholars. They want to work with community partners and they want to work on issues which are of relevance, social change, questions of the local in relation to the global, two questions of what it means to be human and to live in a civil society. The Productive Margins project is a very interesting one because what they're doing is saying, well, how are big decisions made in cities? How is governance developed? Who gets to set regulation? And um, usually this is kind of small groups of people like policymakers sitting in City Hall making these decisions. And what this project is about is about really connecting um, researchers and community organisations together to say, actually, we want to say, we want to generate the research that will help change how decisions are made in our city. Now, that is powerful and that is important, particularly at a time when we look at the state of our democracy. I regard this programme as a showcase, uh, not just for connected communities, 
as a showcase of the importance of what the humanities, and humanities and social sciences, contribute to research activity in Britain. We're here with the Media, Community and the Creative Citizen Project, which is a project which looks at this notion of creative citizenship and what is it and if we better understood it, what value might it have to the UK society. I'm in a strand which is looking at the phenomenon of hyperlocal news websites. So these are local news websites often produced by individuals within communities. It's astonishing really how uh, uh, citizens are, you know, really value the local media and the ways in which you know, the commercial market for local media is retreating from their spaces. So the hyper-local operation seems to be offering real value to them. Should policymakers be interested in them? And if they are, what changes to policy would that make? For community groups, they're very engaged with their local heritage and they like having um, external input and research findings. But there can be the issues about whose heritage is it? How are we talking about it? How are we presenting it? Some researchers bring both the um, interest in how you reflect and the questions you ask and some subject knowledge that helps people think hard about what they're looking at. We started a project to gather together all the information in Scotland about traditional baskets with Stephanie Bunn who's uh, from the University of St Andrews. We've managed to get a website together and we're now starting to get people telling us all sorts of information that we didn't know was even out there. So we've got a sort of flint hand axe um, which is uh, discovered in a back garden in uh, Cambridgeshire. That's not typical of the finds that you would have, but showing you um, that actually it is possible to find finds such as this, which is thousands of years old, just in the back garden. Yeah, this absolutely is the mother of all research programmes. Um, it's creating connections across disciplines, it's creating connections across different sectors, and it's doing all of that with a very purposeful focus on what are the collective challenges that we face as academics, as communities? What are the big challenges that the society faces? And how do we work together to solve them? And for me, what that's doing is developing a set of models um, for the ways in which we might do research that I hope will have a huge amount of influence across other research councils and across other funding.